Big Podcast. David Hooper here. Bigpodcast.com is the website. The newsletter is newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is the audio version of the newsletter called Big Podcast Insider. If you're not subscribed to it, go to newsletter.bigpodcast.com. The links that I'm talking about will be there. Every Friday morning, you will get it via email. I've designed this so it is very easy for you to go through. A lot of podcasting newsletters, they're about tech or they're about the business of podcasting, podcasting news, mergers, big deals that probably don't apply to you, fortunately or unfortunately. This newsletter is about making money with your podcast. It is about getting an audience for your podcast, cultivating that audience, growing it, giving that audience something that they will love to share with other people. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com to get it and also all the links from this episode. Let's get to it. Podcasting is not easy. We just make it look easy. I wrote this newsletter from my wife's office. She was upstairs at the time I wrote it doing a shoot for a jewelry company. The makeup artist for this shoot, she's a friend of mine. And she came in with a ton of stuff. I was helping her bring it in that morning. She knows that I was in the music business for a long time. And during that time, she was telling me about working at the CMA Awards. That happened last week. Country Music Association. That's what that stands for. CMA Awards. It's a big deal. They have a live broadcast, very similar to the Grammys. She was there all day. And related to your podcast, if you were to watch this award ceremony on television, it looks pretty flawless. You might be able to see that it's live. It's not completely flawless like you would do if you were editing, but it looks pretty good. Behind the scenes, she's running around. There are thousands of people running around, makeup people, publicists, record label people, artists, handlers, catering. Then you've got the tech people that are actually doing the broadcasting for the award show, the CMA people. Thousands of people running around during this thing, all of them hoping to be in the right place at the right time. If you watched it on TV, yeah, there were a couple awkward moments. There was one regarding vaccinations. Got me a vaccination joke. And they panned to Carrie Underwood. (laughs) She looked kind of annoyed. But it wasn't a complete train wreck. I brought this up because this is probably like your podcast. That probably sounds familiar. We are pros and we make podcasting look easy, but that does not mean that it is easy. I want you to think about this though, as you're doing your podcast. There is ease when it comes to podcasting and also growing a podcast. In this issue, I've got some things to help make growing your podcast, making a better podcast easier, finding that ease. It's not going to be easy, but there will be ease. The next big thing in podcast, they call it talking back. I would refer to this as interaction. Think about the biggest musical styles right now, even the biggest songs. These are the things that you see on TikTok. These are songs that if you were to go to a live event, everybody would know the really big songs. If you listen to popular songs, and also if you look at the popular genres of music, they're interactive, talking back, as they say. You sing along, you dance, you make TikTok videos. This is one of the reasons that EDM, call it electronic dance music, disco is its maiden name. This is one of the reasons that that style will never, ever die. It's made to be danced to. It's not made to listen to. And arguably, all music is made to dance to. Maybe not church music. But you might want to wave your hands in the air, praise Jesus. I don't know. You see interaction in church. Certainly, if you were to go to a black church where I am in Nashville, you're going to see some call and response. It's interactive. My church, no, no, no. Choirs are going to sing. You're going to sit there and mm, try to stay awake. But newer churches, even the white churches, These non-denominational evangelical churches, they got the call and response thing down. It's like a rock show. The same is true for your podcast. And that is why it is important for you and your podcast to have a way for listeners to call in and otherwise interact with you. What's the deal with interaction? Why is disco going to never die? It is because when you dance to a song, you are the star. You're not watching somebody play music or sing songs. I want you to think about my church. Got that choir there, people in the audience trying to stay awake. Uh. (laughs) These evangelical churches, though, 
You're going to get into it, man. It's an experience that brings you in. And that's one of the reasons that that genre of churches has grown over the last few years. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com has more information about this. I've talked about this though. Taking emails, having people send you YouTube responses, TikTok or Instagram takeovers, guest host. Since that print issue comes out before this issue, I've actually had some people send me segments and I will be airing those very soon here on Build the Big Podcast. If you have not subscribed, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. We'll make sure that you do not miss that. But for this link for interactivity, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. How to grow your podcast using influencers. Speaking of Instagram and TikTok, this is what I call borrowing an audience. And you can borrow an audience of other podcasters. You can borrow an audience of that preacher at the very front of your evangelical church. He says, hey man, go see David. He's got a new selection of pills, potions, and lotions from Amway and also a business opportunity for you. Go get hooked up. You actually see that a lot. <laughs> you got your preacher joined a multi-level marketing company and he's trying to sell you his pills, potions, and lotions, get you in his downline. Yeah, you see that. And if you were the guy who signed up that preacher, that is borrowing an audience. You will do it a little bit differently with your podcast. You might go on a podcast as a guest. You might have an influencer to endorse you. Hey, I really love this podcast. Go listen to it. Here are the three things that this article talks about and why I think you need to read it. It talks about finding the right influencers for your podcast. It talks about using free giveaways to gain subscribers to your podcast. You could also do this for a newsletter that you've got. And I would suggest both. Also using email to tie it all together. The reason I say email is because if you've got somebody who's listening to your podcast, the newsletter is a great add-on to that. Then you're hitting them twice. This audio newsletter, this is a perfect example of this because if you're subscribed to the email newsletter, you got that on Friday. Now I'm talking about that same thing, but in a different way. I'm also, instead of having you read my message, you're able to listen to it. You can hear more of my personality or maybe not more, but hear my personality come through in a different way. Here's the best part about this. If you can figure out influencer marketing, you can do this again and again and again. It's because we live in a big world. I'm gonna take it back to church. I don't mean to be picking on church, but the reason I mention it is because you've got a lot of people gathered in one place at the same time, and they are all watching somebody at the front of the room. Imagine that as a podcast. You can do it again and again and again. With a church, you could go from church to church to church. How many churches are there? Thousands of churches. How many podcasts are there? Millions of podcasts. So if you can find the right place and this talks about it, finding the right influencers for your podcast, how to use those influencers to gain subscribers, how to use email, if you want to add that into it to tie everything together and really solidify that connection, taking it from the influencer to you, this is going to help you grow your podcast. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com has more information. Next up, Paps Blue Ribbon wants to buy ad space in your house or your podcast studio. I'm sitting here in my tricked out closet got some nice sound panels. I'm in a room within a room. It's a basic closet. It's five by eight by eight. I've got foam all around me. And on the other side of that foam facing me, I've got four inch acoustic panels. They are gray. They are plain and boring. Or maybe you think that they are comforting. If you're in here a lot like I am, maybe you want something like that. Maybe you don't need this kind of stimulation. But if you were open to that stimulation and you were doing video or photo, Paps Blue Ribbon will pay you for that ad space. I could have easily gotten me some Paps Blue Ribbon fabric, wrapped these panels up, and I could have had a red, white, and blue studio. Coming to you from the Paps Blue Ribbon studio, they will pay you. You've seen the dancing inmates on YouTube, perhaps. They were dancing to Thriller, to Filipino Jail. They call it Happy Jail. It's a documentary on Netflix. Dude gets arrested. It's a gangster, right? He's got a lot of money. I guess he's fearing for his life. You don't know what's going to happen in a jail. Anyway, he starts paying people to tattoo his name on them. If you know anything about prison, you can get you a jailhouse tattoo, whether it's the Philippines 
or the United States. Modify a razor, get you some ink, jailhouse tattoo. And that's how they put this together. They had all this equipment. He said, all right, if you put my name on your body as a tattoo, I will pay you. It's a great way to buy influence. It's also a great way to make money if you don't mind being on the receiving end and doing what needs to be done to get that money, like getting a tattoo. 20 years ago, there was a company called IUMA, Internet Underground Music Archive, I-U-M-A. And they said, every baby born this year that is named IUMA, we'll give you $5,000. I've got a link to where that kid is now at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. And it's not good. He may actually be in happy jail. It's a tease for you. (laughs) Newsletter.bigpodcast.com to find out where he is now. And that's a nice tie-in. You've got to be careful with whom you associate. It may be a good opportunity for you, though. Think about it. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com has more information. Next up, a dynamic mic for only $50. The Zoom ZDM1. Zoom Dynamic Mic. It's not even Black Friday yet. And Zoom is having a deal. 50 bucks for a dynamic mic. This mic that I'm on, I think it's 350 So you could get seven of these mics for what the mic that I'm on would cost you. And mics get a lot more expensive than this. RE20, about 500 bucks. So 50 bucks for a pretty good dynamic mic, not a bad deal. Zoom is great. I use a Zoom field recorder, the Zoom F6, and it has been a life saver. It's great for backup, great for remote recording. The mics, not too bad. I've actually got reviews linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. It is arguably a step up from the common starter mics that many podcasters start with. The ATR 2100, Blue Yeti, and it's cheaper, 50 bucks. Get the link, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Also in this issue, 102 six-figure creators share their best advice for making money. I was born in Nashville. I've mentioned that here before. And one of the great things about being in a creative community like this is that you see you can make money with your creativity. The first nine years of my schooling, every day I would drive by what they call Music Row, 16th and 17th Avenues. And you would see these big buildings and you would see nice cars and you would see people making money with their creations. Some people don't realize that this is a possibility. My radio producer, Gary Crane, he grew up in Wyoming. I said, did you know you could make money with your creativity out there? He said, no. (laughs) I knew I could make money ranching. (laughs) You may not know this either, but there are 102 six-figure creators sharing their very best advice for making money with your creative passions. For you, podcasting. You're going to get a lot out of this. These guys have each made over $100,000 selling digital products, podcasts, other things online that people value enough to pay money for. If you want people to value your podcast, they've got some advice that will help you make that happen. That's it for this episode. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com has all the links. If you are not subscribed to this podcast, you want the audio version delivered to you, That's a different link. It's bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Get the newsletter, get the podcast. You got a one-two punch. Every Friday, the email newsletter comes out. A couple days afterwards, this version comes out. There's also a lot of stuff in between. I've got some great stuff coming up for you. I just finished up the KCRW 24-hour radio race. That was a 24-hour film festival. You know that concept, but done for podcasting. 12 noon, Saturday, get an email. Here's the topic. Go, go, go. By 12 noon Sunday, it was done. I had a completely finished piece. I will play that for you on a future episode. So get it, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. It was a lot of fun. I met some great people and I really enjoyed the process. I liked having the freedom to do what I wanted to, but also the brief to say it needs to be under four minutes. If you can put these things in it, we'll give you bonus points because you're judged. You're judged by a lot of great NPR people. Again, I'm going to have more about the experience on that very shortly. 
went to bed about 6 a.m. on Sunday morning. <laughs> I thought I'd organized my time pretty well and I'd overbooked. I had a friend of mine from NPR. She was helping me out in an advisory role. And I went to her with my potential stories and she said, well, these stories are longer stories. You're going to want to go back and get this later. This story I think would work for this piece. So I went with it, got the brief within 90 minutes. I was rolling tape. So it was an amazing story and it turned out unbelievably well. I'm very happy with it. And it's exciting to be able to do that. It's exciting to start something and then complete it. Cause so many times we start something like a book. The last book took me four years to write and the new one. I don't know how long I'm in on that one. It's uh, it's been a few months. Let's just say it's not a quick process. So to have something done in 24 hours, very nice. Bigpodcast.com. That's got all the links. Thank you so much for listening. And I'll see you on the next episode of Build a Big Podcast.